Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about why Porsche puts the engine in their 911 in the back of the vehicle. And really this is just an excuse for me to show you some footage of myself driving around in the snow in Porsche 911s. Uh, but uh, I figured we'd make it educational while we're at it. So we're going to go over four different scenarios here and talk about why it actually could be logical, why it is logical to put an engine behind the rear axle. Now of course there are disadvantages to doing this. There's reasons why other companies don't do it. Uh, uh, there's a high polar moment of inertia. That's just a fancy way of saying that it makes the car less eager to turn. Uh, and it also gives it a, a tendency to oversteer where that heavy rear end wants to come out ahead of the front of the vehicle. But we're going to go over some of the scenarios which are actually pretty advantageous, uh, which makes it look like a pretty good idea, especially for sports cars. That's kind of the focus here is that for sports cars, putting the engine in the back actually can make a lot of sense. So the first thing we're going to talk about is braking. And so we have a scenario here, we've got two different sports cars. The one on top is obviously, if you can't tell by looking at it, uh, very obvious, a Porsche 911 with the engine in the back. And the bottom one is a red sports car. You know it's a sports car purely because it's red. Uh, the body shape does not indicate that it is a sports car. Regardless, uh, with the engine in the back, these are both rear wheel drive vehicles. The Porsche has 60% of the weight on the rear axle. I made up these numbers just to simplify it and make it easy to understand. And the other sports car has 45% of its weight on the back because it's got that engine up front. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna look at braking. So the Porsche is slowing down, the other sports car is slowing down. The weight transfer, of course, is going to go to that front axle. And so with the Porsche, you're gonna move, let's say we move 20% of the weight to the front axle. Well, now we've got 60% of the weight is on that front. So the front end of the car is responsible for 60% of the braking. The rear is responsible for 40%. Whereas in the other car, 75%, because it's front heavy, is in the front. 25 on the rear. And what's the tendency with sports cars? Well, the tendency is to have larger wheels in the rear because they're rear wheel drive uh, to help with traction. So the skinnier tires now are responsible for the most of the weight. The ideal scenario is you want your weight evenly distributed across all of your tires for whatever it may be, cornering, decelerating, accelerating. You want it to be even um, for the tires that are trying to do the action that you're trying to do. In this case, braking. So the Porsche is gonna have an advantage here because it's got less weight on that front axle than the other car. So it's got that big rear tire that's got a larger percentage of the braking responsibility than the other sports car. Very simple, just decelerating, you have weight transfer occur. You want that to be evenly distributed rather than this heavy front bias like you see with the red sports car. Now for acceleration, the story changes a bit because now we want as much weight as possible on that rear axle so that we have the maximum amount of potential grip to accelerate with. And so with the engine in the rear, as you start to accelerate, you're gonna have load transfer to that rear tire. So for example, here we're going from a 40-60 weight distribution split. Once we're hard on the accelerator pedal, that g-force transfers the center of gravity is now transferring weight to the rear of the car now we've got a 25 75 split so 75 percent of the vehicle's weight is available for accelerating the vehicle so the maximum acceleration force this car has will be greater than this car here because it has less weight transferring to that rear tire so starting with a 55 45 just like we did here we accelerate Add about 15% to that rear tire. Now you're at a 40-60 split. So 60% of the vehicle's weight available for accelerating. Now this is assuming you have the power to do so. If neither of these have enough power to get to this number right here, then it doesn't matter. You know, they're both 50 horsepower vehicles. Uh, either, both of these are gonna accelerate at the same rate. But as you start to increase the amount of power they have, once you become traction limited, this one will be able to accelerate faster than this car because it has more weight on the wheel that's doing the acceleration. Okay, now let's get into all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive and why a rear engine makes sense in an all-wheel drive sports car. And Porsche has been making all-wheel drive 911s for 30 years now. Uh, I actually got to drive both the all-wheel drive and the rear-wheel drive out in the snow in Canada. Super exciting. Uh, but why does a rear engine all-wheel drive sports car make sense? And the key word there is sports car uh, because for other scenarios, it might not make as much sense for a sports car. You want it rear wheel biased because sports cars uh, tend to be rear wheel drive. That's the most fun uh, form of a sports car. At least, uh, you know, I would say the majority of people agree that that's the best way to go is to have it rear wheel drive. 
And so because of that, if you're going to have an all wheel drive system, you're going to want it to be rear wheel biased. And then as you need it, send power to the front. And that's exactly what Porsche does in this very simple manner. So you've got your engine at the back, it sends it through the transmission, uh, through the differential, to your rear wheels and then there's a drive shaft going to the front a multi-plate clutch that's electronically controlled and you can send up to 40 percent to the front axle if you want to now you don't have to you can send the vast majority at 95 percent to those rear wheels and just a little bit to the front just let the front do the braking do the steering allow the rear to do the majority of the accelerating keep the car a little bit tail happy fun to drive very sports car friendly uh, and there are cars that'll do this with front engine but it's much more complicated because it means sending a shaft all the way to the back then sending another shaft back to the front and then splitting it uh, if you want it to be rear wheel biased that's why most cars with front engines that are all-wheel drive will actually be front wheel biased and then they will send torque to the rear as needed what Porsche's done with the rear engine makes a lot of sense for an all-wheel drive sports car. Now, for a rear-wheel drive sports car, uh, it also makes a lot of sense to have the engine uh, at the back or in the middle. Either way, it's going to simplify where that placement is uh, for efficiency and for weight purposes. So you don't have an engine at the front, then a long drive shaft going all the way to the back, uh, and, and all of that complication, that added rotational inertia, that added weight, uh, that loss of efficiency. Very simple layout here, which just goes directly to those rear wheels. The path that the power travels is very short relative to a front engine rear wheel drive vehicle. Uh, it also does a nice job of dividing up the tasks. So the front of your car is mostly responsible for braking and for turning. And you know, the more you add to those tires, the less they can do of each individual task. So the rear is doing the accelerating, the front is doing the majority of the braking uh, and the cornering, and that helps you uh, have those more balanced tires. Remember, you wanna split up the tasks, have the vehicle have you know even distribution of weight and pressure on the different tires for maximum grip. Another cool thing about having the engine on the rear for a rear wheel drive vehicle is that in poor surface uh, conditions, if you're out on the dirt, or for example, if you're sliding around on ice and snow, uh, it's nice to have that weight on that rear axle because that means your maximum grip is greater for acceleration uh, than if your engine was up front. So the peak acceleration G-force that you can accelerate with with a rear wheel drive vehicle is equal to the coefficient of friction between the tire and the ground. Let's say you're on ice and this is something like 0.2 uh, multiplied by the weight percentage that's on that rear axle. So let's say we have 60% of the weight on the rear axle. We have a drag coefficient or a coefficient of friction of 0.2. That gives us 0.12 Gs, which isn't a whole lot, but remember, we're on a really slick surface here. Uh, 0.12 Gs of acceleration force uh, that we're capable of with that static scenario. With our other vehicle, we're only capable 0.2 times 0.45 of 0.09 Gs. So 33% more acceleration force, you're able to accelerate 33% more, have 33% more useful acceleration traction uh, by having that weight on the rear of the vehicle rather than at the front. So there are a lot of logical reasons for the engine being placed where it is, even though there are disadvantages to it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.